In my hand here I have an intake manifold solenoid valve. This is a faulty unit that I replaced with a genuine one in the workshop the other day. This came out of a Mazda 3 2005 and it had the engine management light on in that vehicle. The fault code that it had on was P0661 and in this video I'm going to be going over the simple tests you can do to check if you have a faulty valve. <laughs> While overall this was a very straightforward job to condemn this intake manifold solenoid valve, if you don't have the right knowledge or the know-how it can be, or the tools for that instance, it can be very difficult to diagnose these type of faults. Having the knowledge will give you the power to easily confirm if you have a failed solenoid or not. Now in this case, we're in a professional work environment, so we had access to a bi-directional scan tool. That scan tool did have a feature in it, which was able to command this on and off. So I got one of my colleagues to jump in the vehicle, press it on and off while I checked the signal. I back probed on the electrical plug and I checked to see if this was getting commanded. It was, but there was no click in the solenoid and therefore this was a faulty unit. It was as simple as that in the initial check, but if you don't have a scan tool that can do that, there is a couple of other simple checks you can do. A multimeter resistance check is always going to be a very straightforward and easy thing to do. All you have to do is get your multimeter leads on opposite sides of the pins, have the electrical connector disconnected of course, and you are going to be checking to see if there is an open circuit in there or potentially you have a high resistance in there. If either of them things are present, you can condemn the part as failed. The other thing you can do, which is a very straightforward and simple thing as well, is connect power directly to it. Now, this doesn't allow for some intermittent failures of these units, but it will give you an indication if your unit has completely failed. So sending power down directly, you should hear a click. If you don't hear a click at all, again, you know you have a faulty part. If you hear a click, you can have an intermittent fault. So if you hear a click, it can break down under heat. So bear that in mind. But otherwise, if you hear no click, faulty unit, and it needs to be replaced. But now that I have access to a Ford Focus that is pretty much an identical setup to this, I'm gonna bring you over to that vehicle and I'm gonna show you on the vehicle how you do these tests. So the simple checks you can do if you don't have a scan tool or bi-directional controls are the following. I have the solenoids here. This is on a Ford Focus, which is pretty much an identical setup to that Mazda that I replaced the unit in, the intake manifold solenoid valve in, which was this forward unit here. Now in this one, I'm gonna be removing this, removing this connector. I'm gonna be checking the resistance across uh, both of these and I'm also gonna be doing that power test on it. Now I have it pretty much already set up for this. I have my multimeter over here and I have my cable for the uh, battery where I'm going to be sending voltage directly down into it. Very straightforward, very simple checks and I'm going to just set the camera up now so you can see it. And on these pins here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a quick and simple power check. So one lead down there, that's my positive. Then I've got my other lead and this should click. We should hear a click. And if you're hearing that click, you know the solenoid is at least moving in and out in a cold condition type environment. So let's do the same check to this one. And this one is not doing anything. 
so the solenoid isn't moving we're not getting any noise from there whatsoever so this straight away is a suspect for failure as well now that isn't something i was expecting because there is no engine light on in this vehicle um, and there wasn't any notable um, driving conditions that i am aware of but there you go a simple test like that has shown up that this one is faulty as well so good job that this test was done on this vehicle now the next one i'm going to do straight away i'm going to use multimeter to check the resistance across this and the resistance across this and see what we get to make this even easier i've re-hooked up my leads here multimeter place there so you're going to have a very clear view of it i'm going to put that on to ohms in a second one lead is already hooked up i've got my red lead here ready to go so we want to put it on ohms and we are first going to be checking the bad one so this is the one that we know isn't even clicking so let's see what result we get and we have a massive out of range reading so that's kilo ohms and that is 51 that is reading so that one is way out from what we would expect it to be we have completely confirmed with 100% certainty that this unit now needs replacing. Let me set this up on the other one. Now the readings I'm expecting on this one is in the 30 something range. Now we know this one works because it's clicking. Let's just see if it continues to have the right reading. Yeah, so we got 32.3 and it's ohms. So this one is fine. This one is within spec and it also, you could hear that clicking when we test it. We know with certainty that one is fine. Now the only thing of note with the likes of these is under heat conditions or if you have an intermittent fault that is present it can be because they are breaking down internally if that is the case then um, when you do the likes of these tests and they're hot you're going to get a much different reading you can also use a heat gun and apply heat on them as you check on the multimeter and see if you are getting a change of result Component testing when intermittent faults are present, it's very common to apply heat in some areas or um, to freeze it, to cool it down in other areas, to try and replicate the conditions that the symptom is showing up in or the fault is being uh, shown up in. And that is it for the testing side of this video. You now have all the information you need. I have some unexpected results, which is on this focus. I found that this valve was faulty as well. I was expecting to see good results on both of these. No engine light is on and no fault codes are stored in this one. So another bit of knowledge on this, you may have a faulty one and it may not even have a fault code or symptoms present of it. Now let's hop over to the Mazda one. I'm going to open that up before I end this video and I'm going to show you the internal components, what makes up that solenoid valve and just give you a little bit of an understanding on how it actually works. So now that we have this disassembled, let me just run through how a solenoid actually works. So a solenoid is essentially an electromechanical device consisting of a metal core and you're going to have inside of that copper windings called a coil. So you've got your copper windings that sit inside in this unit here and when an electrical current passes through that copper coil, it creates a magnetic field. Now, that magnetic field, depending on how it's set up, can push or can pull. In this case, it is um, attracting it and it attracts it to the magnetic field. And once it's turned off, the spring then pushes it back to its off position. So that click you're hearing is the magnet coming on and off and then the spring returning it to its position. That is a very quick roundup on how that unit works. 
and that is the end of the video i really hope you found this video useful i hope you found it helpful and informative if you did please like share comment and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.